Hi there, um, welcome to my uh, look at some of the pirate releases um, Private Jet Press has put out recently. Um, this is going to be of uh, Rahera, the new Warcaster, uh, Swashbuckler, the new um, Light Warjack. Uh, I've got two Powder Monkeys, but I'm only really going to bother looking at one unless there's something majorly different about them. And uh, this one isn't really a general release, this is the Mini Crate, uh, Gaston Crossbones, but he is pirate themed, so I figured I'll have a look at him as well. So we'll start with the Powder Monkey, nice and simple. Comes with a 30mm base. I know how everybody loves to look at the bases. So, nice little angry monkey shaking his fist while cradling a pistol and holding a flaming torch in his tail. His foot looks like it's gripping. I'm guessing that's part of how he's attached to the barrel. Nice detail into that mouth. Um, he's got kind of like a pouty, shouty kind of looking mouth. And the fur detail is pretty good on this. And he's wearing uh, a bandana with a knot off to one side. So I'm guessing each one could have a different paint colour painted bandana. Nothing too special about the barrel. It's got a nice parchment looking piece there that um, some freehand could be done to write blasting powder. I'll see if I can try and find the Audic um, rune alphabet. I don't really like writing uh, um, R languages on minis. I think it should always be in the War Machines language. So yeah, he goes on top of his barrel quite easily, and as I thought, those toes grip the edge of the barrel. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I will be pinning this just for ease of use. It's got a bit of height to him for a um, tiny little monkey, and it's questionable how he gets this barrel about. I reckon he probably rolls it. It's nice. Nice looking little solo. Uh, that puts. I'm not going to bother having a look at the second one. Um, they look pretty similar. Um, there wasn't really any mold lines to speak of on them, which was quite nice. So next we'll have a look at Swashbuckler. Uh, Swashbuckler Light Warjack is based on um, the same chassis as a Buccaneer. Comes on a 40mm base. So uh, recently I had a look at um, Scallywag, and this seems to be using the same parts. So I mentioned in that review that Scallywag's um, chassis parts are new, they haven't just reused the old sculpts, they redid a lot of it. Um, for example, the old Buccaneer, this would have all been one piece. Um, the hips and the body were all one, but now they are separate pieces. So unlike Scallywag, who had a resin body, this one is metal, and that does worry me slightly because this Warjack has very thin gangly legs, so this one might have balance issues. Nice crisp detail in around the boilers. So unlike the resin scallywag whose uh, pipes, these pipes here, the loop of them was um, not solid like it is here. It was, you know, you could stick a paperclip piece through there. But on the metal, that isn't the case. It's not a huge deal, just uh, a point of comparison. 
Um, all the rivets are nice and detailed. Um, one of the old buccaneers that I got, the 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 mold must have been quite quite old because um, every single one of these rivets had like a trail of flash leading off to one edge where I think the um, the mold had torn over the years, and this doesn't seem to have those problems at all because it's a brand new mold. I'm, I'm guessing the hip piece, nice detail on the pistons. Um, this is very much getting pinned, like I will be drilling into that little nub there and that little nub there to uh, pin the legs because although it will be quite hard to get a pin into such a uh, thin leg, um, in this case I will be fine if the paper clip ends up drilling straight through, it, not the paper clip, but if I end up drilling straight through the leg I'm fine with that, I'll pin it on and then I'll green stuff over the hole that I'd accidentally created. I'm not going to stress too much about it. Um, so we've got some slight flashing on the end of the foot there. Okay, now this one does have a bunch of mould lines running down the whole back of it, including this um, piping on the back of the leg. Um, the piping is probably the worst place to get this kind of mould line, because you can't just easily file it down. You can also see it's on the internal aspects there, inside. I mean, that's probably looking at like a minute's worth of filing, maybe. So it's not the end of the world. It goes through this kneecap piece as well. You can see just there. But that shouldn't take you too long to do. Um, these arm pieces look to be the same as scallywags, which is interesting. Um, they do have posability, which is quite nice. So you can be a bit more free to pose these in interesting ways compared to um, buccaneers, which were a lot more limited in that regard. Um, this is an interesting piece. This is um, the clamps but with a gun. You can see there's a gun inside the clamp and during the CID this model went through various rules changes. At one point if it hit a model with the clamp in melee the gun would auto hit and I thought that was a really good rule but in the end they changed it to it just has assault which is a bit boring. Lots of lots of Merc Warjacks have assault. Uh, I thought it was a bit more interesting that it had. There we go, that's beautiful. That had a more unique rule. And then it has uh, its very own cutlass. And this is so cool. It's even got its own little fingers grasping the cutlass, which is really nice. <coughs> Excuse me. A slight mold line running down the back. And that's really nice. So these fit together. In here. And yeah, just like um, Scallywag, these fit together so tight that I don't really think that, yeah, I, I don't feel the need to pin that. Although I will pin the ball into the socket because that snaps out quite easily. It's a fairly decent size sword, even for um, a light warjack. Um, this one does feel a bit looser, so I think this one will be getting pinned. just because I don't want to have to redo it. Oh, and I've just noticed that that is pretty badly uh, missed past on the end of that ball joint there. Fortunately, that's on the inside of the ball joint. All of that miscastness will be going on the inside, so I can just scrape it all off, not have to worry about being 
careful or neat because it will be hidden away and you'll never see it because it will be on the inside. So that's all good, don't need to worry about that. So if you see that on your Mini, don't worry. Overall, that is a pretty damn cool looking uh, light wall jack and uh, I'm interested to see if it's worth spamming then, but I'm not sure. Testing is needed before I uh, commit to that. Plus I wanted to have a look at one of them to see what they look like before I uh, bought more. Um, so now let's have a look at Rahera. Uh, Rahera comes in four pieces, five if you include the Mighty Mighty Leg. Uh, base, sorry. So she comes on a 30mm base. So let's have a look at her main body. Now this is an incredibly detailed mini for this size. She's got these um, dreadlocks running down the front of her armour and they're going to be very challenging to paint. Private Press hasn't done many models with dreadlocks. So I really want to try and get a good close up. There we go, look. So they're really nicely detailed and flow. Even down the back as well there. They're running either side of her Warcast Drama's power plant. And uh, I'll be honest, I haven't seen this mini from the back view. Because I'm not sure if it's been put on rotational spin on Private Press's website yet. But she has... Uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time getting it to focus. She's got a kind of uh, fur cape. Which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting some sort of like leather great coat or a, you know, like Shay and Bart have got. But no, she's got some sort of monster fur coat. From the Shard Islands, she lives on near the Cricks, which is part of the Cricks Empire. God knows what kind of creatures she would have killed to get this. So she has a pistol tucked in. It's pretty hard to make out actually. Tucked in here. It's really hard to make out actually to be honest with you. There it is, look. A bit easy to see. So there's the end of uh, the pistol grip and it goes down into his holster. Giant grey big skull on the shoulder. Um, from the size, that is a pretty small person, or it's not actually a real skull. Okay. So that is a weird attachment point. That is a three-way kind of triangle point of attachment. So it slots into into here. Oh, it slots in really nicely actually. Yeah. That might not need pinning. That might not need pinning. Incredible. Uh, then she has this axe. This feels very small <laughs> for a Warcaster weapon. It's got a wooden handle and there's some runes carved into the top of the top of the axe. 
and then she has this very beaten looking sword with more runes. And these, uh, so this one attaches for a kind of pear shaped attachment down like that. And then the axe. Where does that one go on? Like that. So she's not really in a very combat -y pose, she's in a kind of striding forwards looking pose. So she's cool looking. Very intimidating to try and paint this, I think. She's so detailed. Um, I think I'm really going to have to take my time on that one. And then uh, last, by no means least, uh, we have Gaston. Gaston Crossbones, who is uh, one of the mini crates from last year, I believe. Mini crate number 11. Um, I was too poor to back mini crate. Um, I managed to pick him up on eBay. So this is Gaston Crossbones, pirate themed Gaston, which is a bit of a weird theme for him, really. He's not really linked to the sea in any way, but I figure if I run any of the pirate casters in Irregulars, for example Fiona, who quite likes a model with backstab, um, a pirate themed um, Gaston would be pretty cool to add to that. So his head look, might look a bit weird. That's because there is a hat that's supposed to be here. Ah, oh, hi Riker. Welcome back. He's got a very large uh, power plant compared to uh, Rahara's, who we just looked at. Or Rahara. I'm not exactly sure how it's supposed to be. And his prominent uh, Gypsy Kiss weapon is uh, tucked away there. Even though that's the main thing he does. He's not holding it. <laughs> He's holding these two little daggers. So there's uh, kind of skull and crossbones on his shoulder plate. There is a bit of a bad mold line running down there as well. So that'll take some filing. It's a bit annoying that it's on a kind of internal curve makes it a bit harder but luckily I have a, a file that's perfect for that so not a massive fan of the style of that little dagger seems a little bit butter knifey to me but what do I know and uh, the most important piece that if was a if this was actually available for parts order People would be very excited. It's a pirate hat with crossed bones on it. No skull, which is quite interesting. It's a bit a bit more unique. But if they made this part available for order, I'm sure that they would make a lot and lot of money. Because people love being able to part order hats. Being able to part order hats is the way forward. And I think that they should uh, they should make more hats follow Team Fortress 2's lead and just hats for everybody so he goes together real easy actually I mean let's be honest I'm still gonna pin him because I'm a freak but 
he's pretty cool looking. Um, so overall, I think uh, Gaston is going to look like a pretty good addition for if I run a pirate caster in the Irregulus theme. Um, he will be going up alongside with um, a couple of other pirate themed um, solos that I have. Um, these aren't official Gravity Press models, so you know, make of them what you will. But it's, uh, I think it was Smogcon 2017. Um, pirate Reinhold. Trying to get it to focus in. Yeah. So Pirate Reinhold will be going with a caster in a regulars. Um, I couldn't decide. He came with so many different arm options. So there's a hip flask, a spyglass, a hook, a bottle. And a pistol, and I couldn't decide which, so I drilled into those tiny little arms. I drilled into those tiny little arms, and then drilled into all of these tiny little hands. And I intend to <laughs> just swap out which hand that I want. A um, little bit crazy, probably, but I don't care. <laughs> And um, I'm struggling to see the last... Ah, there she is. This is the other miniature that I will use in a regulars. Pirate Eris. She's work in progress at the minute. So I, I now have Pirate Gaston, Pirate Eris, and Pirate Reinhold. Hopefully Private Press makes some more pirate models. That would be pretty cool. So um, I think that's that's it for looking at those uh, pirate models. So um, I'm going to leave you here. If you've got any thoughts, um, let me know, and I'll catch you later.